Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. Since the live action remake is out in theaters, it's directed by John Furrow, and it's already getting some mix of reviews and all that, I might check it out later on by any chance. But chances are it will never top the original 1994 classic and still the best movie ever made for its time of the Lion King. Yes, it's a story about a young lion who's about to succeed his father's place as the king of the Pride Lands. Yeah, which is a pride for lions around, which he'll take his place in the circle of life. But his jealous uncle, on the other hand, has a plan of his own to take over as king. So we can get rid of both of them. So anyway, this is the 2011 Diamond Edition release that I picked up at Target for a great price. Um, when this was released though, this was actually um, very solid and has some great features joining in. On the other hand, well, as you can see right here on the back, <laughs> the rest of the classic features was powered by BD Live. Or at this rate, B Disney Live. You know what BD Live is. It's a program where you get to access the internet so you get to watch all your favorite videos and all this other stuff, plus you get to have all these live chats, like maybe live video chats or so, to see how it follows. Or you get to see a lot of exclusives going around. Yeah, but unfortunately they won't last. And that's the problem. I think that was one of the biggest mistakes that they put it in this Diamond Edition set because they could have just put all the features, poured it in from the previous releases and just keep it that way without using a BD Live function. Yeah, which is the virtual vault. That's not a great way to do your releases, man. Disney should know better. But Disney sure hasn't learned a lesson these days because they started doing that with um, digital copies. You know, let's put features on digital only instead of Blu-rays and DVDs. You know, that that's just not fair. Yeah. See, why can they do exactly like what they did with Alice in Wonderland, as well as um, Beauty and the Beast, and even Lady in the Tramp for that matter? Just port all the features, okay? How hard is that to put all the features on a new format? Ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, that's what you can see on the back, where it has everything included. Um, and of course, <laughs> same as usual. Um, okay. Yeah, just a lot of um, advertisements here. You can see what the disc looks like. Yeah, you can see the DVD right here and the Blu ray. Just advertisements. Um, yeah, just <laughs> more advertisements. As is the Blu-ray guide, <laughs> where you can see what they include. Uh, kind of like in the days of um, DVDs, where they tell you how you access them. And I'm not holding it very well. I'm sorry. And as the movie rewards and stuff. Okay. Um. So, there you go. Now, the movie did have some controversies, or at this rate, I think it's only two controversies. But the biggest one of them all is that when they found out that they actually 
plagiarize uh, Kimba the White Lion, which was created by manga creator Azumu Tezuka, a you know, legendary one who gave us uh, Astro Boy. And with Fred Ladd actually uh, producing for the English translation, that, and he actually put it on NBC back in the 60s. Because now you can see the similarities uh, between the character of Kimba, which that's why that's why they noticed how familiar it was where they used the name Simba. And you can see the characters look exactly like as is depicted in the movie. Of course, the the film itself is actually an inspiration to William Shakespeare's uh, Hamlet which is a story about uh, the prince who found out that his father is killed by his uncle and he's about to take revenge against him. And also has um, an inspiration to uh, the Christian Bible focusing on Joseph and, and Moses. So that sort of thing. Now I did watched Kim of the White Lion when I was young and then later rented the, the VHS tapes because you know, I, I like to check it out and I really did enjoy Kim of the White Lion I mean I mean it's a right to love both I mean the Lion King and Kimba but even for the company I mean they couldn't sue them they tried but then I learned that that all the animators and cartoonists uh, were about to sign a petition you know to actually have a lot of credit to uh, Azuma Tezuka because you know since he died in 1989 um, he, uh, he was considered to be a legend I mean they said this was Japan's uh, Walt Disney as they expected they don't want to affect everything else or everyone who have seen it Still, Kim of the White Lion is a classic, and so is uh, Lion King. But I'm going to keep it that way. Um, got a lot of great songs, too. They, they were written by Tim Rice, and Ellen John did perform the songs. Although, one song, which is Can You Feel the Love Tonight, was the only one that's played at the end credits. So the other songs, like Circle of Life, and I just can't wait to be a king, yeah, and all that. Yes, uh, John did perform those versions too. But also you got Hans Simmer to, to compose the music for the film. So it's really cool that he joins in too. But you also got singers like Jason Weaver, as well as Joseph Williams, to provide uh, the singing voice for for Simba, yeah, both young and adult. <laughs> well, you know, we both share the same name. Yeah, I share the same name as Joseph Williams, and my brother Jason shares the same name as Jason Weaver. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. Um, also, to note, though, that this movie did play at the IMAX in 2002. Which they did added uh, a new song. It was a deleted scene, just like what they did with Beauty and the Beast. You know, when they had Human Again, it's the Morning Report. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, basically uh, used in the live uh, musical version of The Lion King. Yes, because they had a musical um, later on in, in the nineties. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But you got a great cast right there. A great cast that did the voices of all the characters, including uh, Matthew Brovick doing the voice of Adult Simba, uh, James Earl Jones as Mufasa, uh, Jeremy Irons doing the voice of Scar. 
which I know originally they were going to get Tim Curry or Michael McDowell to do the voice. I mean, even Irons wasn't interested at first because he thought that this character was going to be a comedic role, and he's not really interested in doing the comedy. So, like, he's more of a a serious dramatic actor. But so I guess they had it written this way because yes, yeah, Scar was supposed to be more dramatic anyway. So it makes sense. Um, you also got Maury Kelly. Uh, from the movie uh, The Cutting Edge, if you remember her. She does the voice of Nala. Uh, you got Ernie Sabella, Nathan Lane, yes. Um, Robert Golem, the late great uh, Robert Golem from, from Benson. Yeah. Warren Atkinson, yes, Mr. Bean himself. <laughs> Oh wow, and, and they even got Whoopi Goldberg with Cheese Marin, even the Madge Sinclair. So, that's a great cast right there. Great talent. Also, Jonathan Taylor Thomas uh, from Home Improvements. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, and it got like 17 writers uh, joining in with the other three, so that means it's like 20 writers, I believe. Yeah, 20 writers. Wow. <laughs> and not only for its success, but they even have um, two direct-to-video follow-ups, which is uh, The Lion King 2 Simba's Pride. It was a right but not as good as the original. And then we also got The Lion King One and a Half, which is a prequel to the original. We even got the TV series Timon and Pumbaa. Yes, and I love Timon and Pumbaa. I mean, they're definitely, you know, a comic relief duo. You know, they're, they're like the, uh, the Laura and Hardy or Alvin and Costello. Even Keen and Kill for that matter. <laughs> Yeah, they go around, yeah, they're, they're meat cats and war hogs, you know, just going around, spending time together, you know, doing whatever they can, also eating bugs, yeah, trying to have the good life, so. <laughs> and yes, there's even a TV show called The Lion Guard, which is on Disney XD. Also, of course, we did have a, a 3D re-release back in 2011, which that's the re main reason why we finally got the Blu-ray release, because uh, there was a 3D version that followed. Um, of course, by the time I got this movie, yes, uh, the movie was re-released at the time. Let's see how it looks. And yes, we now have the live-action remake, as I just mentioned at the beginning of the video. Try to become as photorealistic with CGI, but they're basically saying that it might be a shot for shot remake, just like Psycho. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> okay. Also, uh, those lion roaring sounds that I heard, um, you can pretty much tell that it even echoes uh, the same lion roaring track that they use in the MGM logo. Yeah, since 1982, as you could hear um, through the echoes of that. The movie stars Matthew Brobick from Fairless Bueller's Day Off, along with War Games, Glory, Family Business, uh, The Night We Never Met, and many other films he's been doing. Yeah, even B Movie. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan Terry Thomas, uh, once again, from Home Improvement, who played Randy Taylor. Yeah, the middle child of the Taylors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the one who makes all these jokes. I love to listen to heavy metal and stuff. Uh, Jeremy Irons uh, from the movie Dead Ringers, as well as The Mission, uh, Damage, and Reversal of Fortune. Yes. In fact, there's even a scene where it does... Uh, 
does do a, a tribute to his character that he won an Oscar for, uh, Klaus Van Bulo, where he says, you have no idea. <laughs> James Earl Jones has been best known for providing the voice of Darth Vader in the Star Wars films, but he's done a lot of extensive work in his career. Maury Kelly, uh, The Cutting Edge, she was also in the movie uh, With Honors that same year, the one with Brendan Fraser and Joe Pesci and Patrick Dempsey, yeah, that movie, very underrated. Um, uh, Nathan Lane, yes, Nathan Lane, he was in the movie uh, Frankie and Johnny, yeah, the one with uh, Al Pacino and Michelle Pfeiffer, directed by Gary Marshall. And yes, he was also in the movie uh, Mouse Hunt, yeah, with Lee Evans. Yeah, that was the third film from DreamWorks. Yeah. Ernie Savella, Baba Gulam from Benson, TV show Benson. Yeah, which was a character who started out as the butler of the Tates from the TV show Soap before he went on to become like a congressman. Yeah, Rowan Atkinson, who's been best known for playing Mr. Bean, yeah, <laughs> the wacky character, also went on to do uh, films like The Witches, and he was also in Never Say Never Again, he even did the, the Johnny English films, uh, even the Four Weddings and a Funeral, same year that this film came out. Yeah. Madeline Clare. And the hyenas joining in. We have Whoopi Goldberg. He has a comedian, but also a, a terrific actress. She's been in films like The Color Purple, along with um, Jumpin' Jack Flash, Fatal Beauty, yeah, Sister Act, and hmm, even Ghost, which she won an Oscar for. Cheese Marin, yes. From Cheese and Sean, yeah, who does a lot of movies with Tommy Chong. <laughs> yeah, and of course he did do the film um, Born in East LA. Yeah, great, funny comedy. So went on to do um, Oliver and Company and several others. He was even in the movie uh, Desperado, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, and even Machete. <laughs> Jim Cummings, yeah, longtime voice actor, been known for doing the voice of Winnie the Pooh and Tigger in the later ones, and does the voice of Darkwing Duck. <laughs> and Zoe Leader. It's written by Irene Mechi, Jonathan Roberts, and Linda Wolverton. Yes, the same writer who's done a lot of extensive work in her career and has like 17 writers joining in which includes uh, Joe Raff, late great Joe Raff and Chris Sanders as, as well as Tom Cito. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to say the rest because it's just too much. And it's directed by Roger Allers and Rob Minkoff who later went on to direct Mr. Peabody and Sherman. For DreamWorks. The movie begins set in the lands of Africa. A pride of lions had ruled the entire wild animal kingdom from Pride Rock, where we meet King Mufasa along with Queen Serapi to bring in their newborn son, Simba, which is being presented by all the gathering animals around, which includes zebras, giraffes, Elephants, uh, meat cats, uh, rhinos, and all the rest. Um, joining in by Rafiki, the mandrill, who is the kingdom's shaman and advisor. What he does was that he takes out one of his fruits from his stick. You know, he 
breaks apart and just puts in the juice onto Simba's forehead, even takes uh, a little bit of sand, throws it over him. So it's sort of like a baptism in a way. But it's the way to, um, to take um, Simba, you know, just grab him and lift him up all the way up in the air where the shade of sunlight coming directly from the clouds starts to shine directly to Simba. And that's where all the animals kneel. So that's the circle of life. Yeah, it has a beautiful opening too, you know, with the song The Circle of Life and you see Zazu you know, flying around, you know, greeting with them. Yeah. Zazu, of course, is uh, a major domo, yeah, the hornbill uh, bird, and it's amazing. So Mufasa actually shows Simba, as he grew up, as a young cub, the pride lands and actually explained to him the responsibilities of becoming a king and joining in with the circle of life, connecting with all living things around. But we have Mufasa's younger brother, Scar, who didn't show up uh, during the circle of life at the beginning, but he conveys the throne and actually has a plot to eliminate both Mufasa and Simba, so that way he could become king yeah, the ruler of Pride Rock. So now he'd be able to take over to join in with the hyenas. Yes. Because <laughs> he's the only one that's becoming the ruler of them. Anyway. So. At this point on, he goes around tricking Simba along with um, his best friend Nala they're actually planning on going to the forbidden elephant's graveyard because that way they get to explore all uh, dead things going around and you know just going for the side of danger and the fact that Simba is going to be brave no matter what and of course um, before they got there they, they actually joined in with Zazu because Azu had to watch over them. And this is where you know, Simba sings the song. Oh, I just can't wait to be king. Yeah, that song. <laughs> um, so when they finally got there, because they were trying to trick uh, Zazu to get away from them all, they were being attacked by three hyenas, Gen Z, Bonsai, and Ed which we all learned that they worked together with Scar with Mufasa being alerted and finally came to the rescue just when their, the hyenas were about to attack Simba and Nala and, and of course Zazu yeah I mean the scene where Simba was about to you know work on his war until so, yes, Mufasa came and you hear his war. <laughs> so Mufasa just attacks them, telling them to if you, if you ever mess with my son again, you're going to be killed. <laughs> so he was very upset, but he was also scared because he was afraid that Simba is going to be attacked. And the fact that he disobeyed him not to go to the elephant's graveyard. So the only thing he only had to own is the rest of the lands, just not the elephant's graveyard and stuff. Though Mufasa forgave him for that, explains that the great kings of the past watch over them through the stars, you know, on, during the night sky, from which one day he'll watch over Simba when he becomes uh, an adult. You know, he'll grow up to become the king of the pride lands and he'll take over but he'll get to do whatever he wants 
anyway and this is going to be the big one too as I spoil the surprise here but that's okay because I know everybody already seen the movie would know the story Scar sets a trap for his brother and his nephew yeah Mufasa and Simba which what he does was he lures Simba into the gorge and having the hyenas drive the entire large herd of wild beasts yeah it's a stampede that was going around and they're ready to to go all the way straight down from the hill all the way onto the gorge and they're ready to attack you know joining them side by side with the hyenas and Simba was already in trouble and then this is where Scar warns uh, Mufasa and Zazu to go um, to try to save uh, Simba but it was all a trick because by the time Mufasa was about to save uh, Simba I put him straight to the the rock so that way he'll be safe. Um, Mufasa was trying to hang on wanted Scar to help him pick him up and this is where we found out that Scar had murdered Mufasa. Fell all the way straight down to his death. And you know, landed just right in the middle of the stampede of the herd. Yeah. So Simba went all the way down trying to uh, help um, his father uh, get up but it was no use because he was already dead and now Scar um, came by found out about what happened and then tell him to run away and never return and then have the hyenas you know, attack him and chase him all the way down until Simba finally ran away as fast as he could into another land. But he wants up in the desert and it was being rescued by a meat cat and a war hog named Timon and Pumbaa. They were fellow outcasts um, around the entire lands everywhere which Simba actually grows up in the jungle you know, hanging around with Timon and Pumbaa, you know, going around eating bugs and just going around swimming and doing all those other fun activities, all of that. Yes, and so now Simba becomes an adult. And yes, they even brought in the the Swahili language, which means no worries, called Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata, what a wonderful phrase. <laughs> yeah. So, they're basically spending time, you know, looking up at the stars, you know, talking about what he remembers or trying to stay in the past, you know, trying to, you know, focus on what he wants to do in his life. Like, he thought about becoming king, but then he just. He just wanted to stay with Timon and Pumbaa and just have the best time of his life in the jungle. That is until Nala came along and was ready to attack Pumbaa. I mean, we now find out that she's now an adult. Until, yeah, it's Simba attacks uh, Nala and then that's when they find out that <laughs> they were all grown up and... <laughs> Well, you get the story. <laughs> so they, they spend more time together for a while, you know, just um, going for all these waterfalls and you know, just playing around together. But then they explain about why did Nala came back. Well, they found out that since uh, Scar took over as king, you know, which he explained to the rest of the lions around and everyone else that Mufasa and Simba were dead 
and now uh, they're joining by with the hyenas so they're going to take over hoping that they'll be able to find some food or water but unfortunately they couldn't do that because well they're having a hard time trying to find out see that that's why that's why scar doesn't even know how to help out all the rest of the lines and everything so so that's when Nala so that's why Nala came by to find help hoping that they'll find a way to to have all the lions and everyone else to have food and water so they'll they'll be able to survive but, but Nala was lucky enough to find Simba and hoping that he wants him to come back to Pride Rock so hoping he'll take over as king so he can stop Scar but he refuses because he thought this was not going to change anything but what made it possible however was that Wafiki came along finding out that Simba was alive and he came by to help uh, Simba try to remember about uh, his father Mufasa which this is where he begins to um, see uh, Mufasa up in the sky and this is where he explains that he needs to remember everything that he told him so that way he'll become keen and be able to stop Scar from from his uh, schemes so he has to go back to save the rest of, of the entire kingdom so that way he'll be able to defeat Scar you know, along with all, all the hyenas joining around which that means he's going to join in with uh, Timon and Pumbaa and Nala to stop him and then have to save Sazu from being trapped and well <laughs> which also led to the truth that was happening before he begins to find out the secret about what Scar did because Scar was the one who murdered uh, Mufasa Simba didn't do anything but he was shocked that this happened so now he finally gets to attack Scar in that one scene you know after he was after he was telling him to to run away and never return the same way that Scar told him when when he was a young cub but Scar just takes um, some sand and just throws it straight into his eyes and then that's where we had the battle between you know, Simba and Scar and, and it was in slow motion too it's actually one of the best scenes that you ever seen in a film where you have a a wonderful fight scene great battle between the two and and in the end you know just when Scar jumps all the way up straight into the fire um, he actually takes him he actually lifts up and just pushes him all the way down over the hill and just landed straight until the hyenas attacked him and ate him because we learned that uh, Scar just said that they were the enemies instead of being friends yeah because he lied yeah because yeah, he was he was the big murderer of all yeah of course uh, but Fiki in that one scene though that I love was when he <laughs> he does like uh, the, he did a kung fu move and he, he took down all these <laughs> hyenas and I know Timon and Puma join in you know saving Sazu and just <laughs> have Puma just attack the, one of the other uh, hyenas <laughs> yeah just when they were tricking the hyenas to actually uh, eat both <laughs> to go after Timon and Pumbaa and stuff. It's just, just hilarious. Okay, well anyway. So, when Scar was defeated now, 
Simba now finally takes the throne. So he now he remembers. So now he's he's the king of Pride Rock, and as they continue during the circle of life. Yeah. So there you go. Wow. Such a wonderful film. Filled with emotions. Um, great story. I mean, definitely a story about how, you know, basically the, basically a story of how a lion does become the king of Pride Rock and how he'll become the ruler of the entire uh, wild animal kingdom in Africa. Very fascinating. Uh, great characters joining in, you know, and a lot of memorable songs. Yeah. Breathtaking animation. Yeah, all done by other animators like Mark Han, Ruben A. Quanto, Andreas Deya, and all, all the other, all the rest joining in, uh, along with Don Hahn. Yeah, so they provided it. It, it really, um, they also had blend in with computer animation too for several scenes, and which, believe it or not, though. Um, Pixar actually joined in with it. Yeah, so Pixar did some of those uh, computer-generated scenes of of um, of even the cloud or or any of the other movements of the stars and all this other stuff. I was like, wow, I was impressed. While well, the rest is hand-drawn animation. Um, now, I know in the original um, theatrical release from 1994, they actually did have um, the original animation where they actually had all the, um, the crocodiles and all the other scenes um, of, of animals uh, during, the, during the I Just Can't Wait to Be King sequence that they had. They changed the animation in the 2002 IMAX version, which is the same version that's on the Blu-ray and DVD releases. And yes, uh, even the the scene of the clouds where you get to see Mufasa, you know, just after uh, he saw his reflection straight into um, um, the river that uh, Rafiki uh, showed him. Um, so, they, there was a scene at the end where just when, um, he says, remember, repeatedly, which is all echoed, that's when the Simba says, no, please don't leave me, where the sky, just about the clouds, just ready to, uh, emerged from the transition, of Mufasa. In the later version, we only just see the stars. Yeah, so that was sort of a screw up right there. And that's why we had the, the later releases where they fixed that problem. So I, I realize that now. <laughs> yeah. so just going for details and stuff. Um, but anyway, it definitely is a, a fascinating take on Hamlet with Joseph and Moses throwing in, even though, yes, with the controversy of Kimba the White Lion. Um, I thought they did a, a wonderful job uh, capturing the spirit of, of the story. And I think they really... Um, they, it really shows how the character really is about Simba's journey to becoming the next king, taking over his place. Now, Scar, of course, I mean, was a terrific villain in the movie. I mean, even though you know, he was the one who wants to take over. 
I mean, he wanted to hate his character after what he did. But, nevertheless, uh, it's amazing. But you also love uh, Mufasa, you know, because he's the king and he was definitely his guide. Going in, and of course, he has and Simba's mom, uh, Queen Sabari. You know, has a bit of, and all, all the other characters joining in as we all speak. Definitely has an African feel to it, like, as you can see. I mean, when you hear the music, you can hear the Swahili language joining by. And, um, it's like, wow. Very breathtaking here. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. And now that's why we can see why the Lion King was one of the most popular films of all time in 1994. I think 94 was such a big year for summer films too. The CGI remake is just going to be what it is, like the original, but we have everything. Um, they had a lot of great songs too, um, all which um, composed by. Uh, Hans Zimmer, but joins in with uh, Tim Rice, who wrote the lyrics, and Ellen John joining in too. Had a lot of great songs like Circle of Life, I Just Can't Wait to Be Keen, Be Prepared, yeah, great uh, song too by Jeremy Irons singing, um, Akuna Matata, yeah, which uh, Nathan Lane, Ernie Sabella, and joining in with uh, Jason Weaver and Joseph Williams. And then of course, Can You Feel the Love Tonight, which had a different verse before uh, John, Don John did his version for, for the end credits. Uh, just beautiful. Love those songs. Still memorable. Um, they even used the song The Lion Sleeps Tonight, which Tumba, Timon and Pumbaa actually sang, which I thought that really worked too. <laughs> yeah. I know later on, uh, when they did their short film together, which is Stand By Me, yes, they sang their version of Stand By Me. <laughs> was that the short film that they played uh, before um, another movie uh, from Disney? Oh, yeah, it was The Big Green. Uh, back in 1995. Yeah. And of course they have their own TV show that same year too. <laughs> it was lasted for for like a couple of years like from 1995 all the way until I think 1999. Yeah. Lasted pretty long for a while. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh and they even had a lot of merchandising too uh, when the movie came out. You know with Burger King, Mattel, Kodak, Nestle and even Payless uh, Shoe Source, yeah, they they join in to uh, provide a lot of stuff for the movie, a lot of which it was like over billions of dollars worth. Wow! And it's been re-released many times. They had a re-release in November, you know, hoping that they will continue to hoping they will continue with its run. And of course, they re-release it for its free for the IMAX and 3D. So, made a ton of money. Had a lot of home media sales too, joining in, you know, with Laserdisc, VHS, DVD, and even Blu-rays. And of course, 4K Ultra HD, <laughs> and even a wonderful soundtrack. And Excellent voice acting uh, from the entire cast. I mean, they're all excellent. They definitely provided the voice very well in shows. So. Anyway, that's The Lion King, the original 1994 classic, and I give it five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, Akuna Matata. <laughs>